Good afternoon, everybody. To the King family, uh, to our honorable members of the Congress of the United States, and to my fellow Americans, good afternoon. I want to thank you for gathering today, Speaker Pelosi, of course, in our beautiful Washington, D.C., to honor the birthday and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. We, of course, know that Dr. King played an integral role in desegregating America and helping us to get the Civil Rights Act. We cannot think of a better way to honor his legacy than to speak up, to take a stand, and to take action to ensure that Americans nationwide have their voices heard and counted. Across the nation, we know that states are passing anti-democratic, anti-voting bills, restricting the will of the people by the slimmest margins. I, like most Americans, find myself wondering what Dr. King would make of this moment we find ourselves in. It is a moment, sadly, that we're all too familiar with. What would he say about the inaction on the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, which has already been ready for over a year? We know what he would say because he fought that fight his entire life. What would he say about a filibuster that stands in the way of protecting the most basic of American rights? Again, we know what he would say because he was fighting this fight 60 years ago. This fight, a fight for fundamental rights as Americans, the fight to make true the ideals of our democracy, and we know today that is enough is enough. As President Biden said last month, we are standing at an inflection point in our democracy. Do we accept minority rule? Do we give up the dream of democracy in America? Do we give up on the idea of forming a more perfect union? Do we stand back and allow the minority to dig in its heels to preserve a system and ideals that are relics of the past? And we say together, we can't and we won't. And I came here today to make sure that no one forgets about Washington, D.C. Because we cannot talk about voting rights without talking about the disenfranchisement of 700,000 taxpaying Americans right here in Washington, D.C. A legacy of slavery and Jim Crow America. Today we're talking about the filibuster, but consider this. We wouldn't even be in this situation if Washington, D.C. had two senators, the two senators we deserve. Because you know what? Washington, D.C. stands with the majority of our fellow Americans who are in favor of expanding and protecting the right to vote. So don't forget, not only does the filibuster routinely silence the will of the majority, the will of, ma of the majority isn't even fully represented. And the plight of Washington, D.C. is the same plight that millions more Americans could find themselves in if we don't pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, cut out from the democratic process and treated as second-class citizens. You will be expected to pay taxes, you will be expected to serve in the military, and you will be expected to follow the rules set by the Congress, Senator. Dr. King was unapologetic in his fight for racial justice, social justice, and economic justice. We cannot advance our democracy or build stronger communities if Americans do not have a say when decisions are being made and how funds are being distributed. So we're speaking up for voting rights, but also speaking up for the 700,000 people here who don't have a vote in their own Congress, in their own city. Thank you.